All right, so welcome back everybody to Avenue Obscura. And today I have some special guests with me. I have Christy and Richard Soretto from, they own the All Saints Lunatic Asylum Haunt uh, in Apple Valley. Um, so Christy, I wanted to, and Christy and Richard, I wanted to have you guys on today and basically talk a little bit about, first off, let's talk about the history of your haunt. Uh, how many years have you guys been in operation and if you could tell us you know, any fun backstory and uh the actual storyline of your hunt i know yeah. that's a lot of questions so go ahead you want to so we've been at it about 17 years plus or minus depending on where you kind of sit with it uh, we started off of course as a yard haunt um i got a web gun i got one of those really really nice web guns and I just went crazy and did up the entire house, oh my gosh. Uh, covered all the furniture and stuff in sheets like you'd see in an old abandoned house, and then just webbed the crap out of it. So that was sort of our beginning in there. We did um, it for Halloween party. We, th we used to throw really big Halloween parties. So yeah. we started building haunted houses just for something else to do. So that's, and then we got that web gun and that was it. Yeah. And then that kind of evolved from there. We would have um, something set up. We would have the party going. Have a theme. Uh, have a theme as as far as uh, as what we would pick. One, uh, what was it? Early years. One was um, uh, New Orleans based, so we had a cemetery in out in the front of the house, etc., with the the crypts and all the that voodoo. stuff. Voodoo. And I was uh, and she and I were were voodoo uh, priest and priestess, I guess you can say. Yeah, we did all the classics. Um, Frankenstein, Adam's family made all did. of our kids dress up. Yeah. So it was like a couple's That's thing. Funny. So. We did Adam family with with her and I as as uh, as Morticia and Gomez and uh, Frankenstein's bride and Frankenstein that sort of stuff. Um, I think our first haunted house we did a we did a house of horrors in our backyard. We had a carnival theme and it was a our other house it was a much smaller house. So we did it in the backyard and we put up this big tent and I, we bought our first props, which we still have, including that organ behind us. Oh, nice. um, that was one of our very first props. Which, which doesn't fit anywhere else right now. Yeah, our ceiling's <laughs> too small. So we, we did a, a house of horrors and we had um, a big tunnel. We had a big 12 foot clown on the top of our house, which incidentally in a big wind came down on my car. And that was, that was interesting telling the insurance that my car got attacked by a 12 foot clown. But yeah, how but that was related, fun. And we, uh, yeah. Insurance <laughs> yeah. Halloween related incidences. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know. And it was a, you know, it was carnival theme. And people loved it. Yeah, there were games, there were carnival games to play, you know, and like house the, of the ball and the, and, the, and the bowling pins and that sort of thing. And then, of course, uh, we had a um, uh, fortune teller yeah. down in there. And then we moved to Apple Valley and we had a lot more acreage. So we built something in the backyard. We did a, it was like a house, of, I don't know, it was kind of a haunted doll sort of theme. And the, that was for the friends. And then we, because it was in the backyard, all of our, we don't have a lot of neighbors where we live. They're kind of far off, but they would drive by and see us out there. So on Halloween, they started ringing the doorbell and asking if they could just go through. So we were like, yeah, that's okay. And then it got bigger and bigger. And then one year I was like, you know, I've always wanted to do an asylum. Let's do that one year. Cause we kept changing themes. Mm -hmm. And that was about 15 years ago. We had a big building that we built in the back and it was really amazing. And then the town came in and made us tear it down because it was too big and uh, it was a whole thing. And we ended up building the sheds all to code. And that went, that went okay for a little while until we started bringing in too many people. I think we had a, th we had what, 3000 people come in one night. And so the town came in and said, you know, you can't do this anymore. You're going to need to be somewhere where there's sprinklers and, safety so that's the day we became professional and that was about two years earlier than we planned yeah we weren't really wanting to but. go that way but that was about six years ago so we got this place nearby and it's okay but we have definitely outgrown it this is oh, wow. we, we were looking for a bigger place now yeah okay because we so were any, busting um, out at the seams yeah so so you're currently looking then huh yeah currently looking yeah we're at Right now we're at about 4,500 plus or minus feet, square feet for the maze. Um, and, and then of course, a, a, an, extra, an, extra, an extra piece for um, storage and, 
uh, equipment and uh, you know tools and it stuff. It sounds like, like a lot, but it's not yeah. once you get started. Okay. And uh, no. Yeah. Well, we went. We actually downsized when the town told us we had to go. We were at about twelve thousand square feet. It was so much fun, though. We had we we got to know some of our neighbors. We had these neighbors that would come from next door. We could stand on the front porch and we would see them. They would all jump in the back of the truck and be woo woo woo, so excited. <laughs> and they come over every weekend. They and they still they moved out of state. They moved to Washington or Oregon or somewhere. They moved to Washington. They moved to Washington and they still come here every Halloween to come through our haunt. They come instead of instead of uh, instead of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So their relatives know to expect them around Halloween instead of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, we still have people that come through the haunt that came way back when we were a home haunt. So it's kind of fun. And it's fun to hear the stories. Like we had a couple that came through last year that said they went on their first date in our haunt. And he took her to a haunt because he knew she'd hang all over him, you know? So he knew he was <laughs> going to get lucky. Man. And they, and it was, and it worked. Now they have a baby and they're married. And <laughs> wow. So it's fun. It's fun. Cool. Some of the stories that, it was funny when it was on, in the backyard, we built these sheds. And to me, it was very obviously sheds, but people thought it was a real asylum. And we had a period of time where, there was a, a Facebook group that was putting, they were putting together a, a, paranormal. a paranormal group and they were going to come and, and break in because they'd heard all these stories about all these people that had died in this asylum. So you always <laughs> had ghost school. adventures in your Yeah, area. it was great. We were like, but please don't break in. That's our home. <laughs> it was a good backstory. Yeah. We've changed our backstory a couple of times as we went through. And the earliest of the asylum was just asylum. It wasn't really didn't have a story, uh, anything really. particular. Didn't really have much of a story. Um, you know, we shot a couple of videos, a couple of trailers for people to kind of get teased with. Um, <clears throat> but when it became All Saints, then we had a backstory. Uh, essentially, this was uh, uh, um, the star of, of, of the U.S., the star of, of, of asylums back at, at this point in the, in the middle 1800s. So... So it goes from about 1850s to about 18 to about 1950s, 1960s. So everything in there is period. Everything that's in there from the music to the costumes to the tools that they use are, are only from 1850 to 1950. So we've been collecting antiques from all over the world, actually, yeah. to fill it. So it's kind of fun to go through. If you, can if you can spend some time going through, it's kind of fun to look in the cabinets and stuff because there's always some really bizarre things that we come across. That's so. really unique. I don't know of any other haunt that uses, I mean, they'll, they'll use replicas, but not yeah. actual authentic props from that time period. That's really cool. Well, it can be, you know, they can get abused. So yeah. you have to be careful have how be you put careful. stuff. Yeah. So, again, 1850s to 1950s, 1960s. And essentially it starts off as like the star of, of asylums. Uh, it has a benefactor, a mysterious benefactor who's come in and really beefed everything up, but then started taking funding. But we don't know who he is. From the federal government, from the state government. He's called Sonomene. So, yeah, we don't know who he is. He's, he's, his last name is Sonomene, which um, if you figure out. He has a crypt a in the cemetery. The that We know that. Um, That's all we know about him. And of course, you know, the typical story, doctors who are performing interesting experiments, et cetera. There's cannibalism in there, uh, inevitably. Of course. And in the end, around the 1950s, um, the state brings troopers and, and other officials in to try and close the place down, and it doesn't work out too well. Um, one or two of them get out of there. A lot of bite marks on their arms from the reports back from that time period. Um, but basically, the doctors and the patients boarded everything up, and no one's been back in until Mrs. Collins bought the place on a tax sale bit, yeah. and was hoping to make a bed and breakfast, which didn't work out that well either. So, so that's a basic storyline. There's, there's um, patient files. You can open up patient files and read a little bit about the different patients in there. Yeah, um, I thought like that was patient yeah, patient 301 is one of my favorite, the little girl that sort of has a way to skinny in and out of different places, you know, hidey holes, et cetera, and has a very decent appetite. <laughs> yeah, we had, and then the holidays started because <laughs> Christmas rolled around and, you know, we just, 
all of us were some of a lot of our family, all of our kids work with us, you know, it's a lot of friends and family and we just started missing it, you know, and December would come around and everybody's like, Oh, we should just do a Christmas hunt. And we did our first year in the backyard and it was so cold nights in the desert are so cold. So we had those little warming packets, you know, that you heat up. For yeah. The, yeah. For the actors, yeah. Yeah. It was, but it was fun. And that was our yeah, first but people Christmas. People went crazy. People it was went so crazy. much fun. We had this evil packed. Santa oh, yeah. that would come out in the crowd and chase the kids. It was hilarious. Yeah. No, I love, I love Christmas haunts. Christmas haunts are, are yeah. they're fun. Cause it's it, 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 like, I was telling my wife the other day, it's like a juxtaposition between something that should, yeah. be spooky, but now you've made it spooky. So I think it's a really neat kind of, you know, and very few people really do them. Um, I think, uh, uh, yeah. had done them at one, uh, one time and yeah, uh, I think they still do. Yeah. Reign of terror does them. I think, I mean, again, I'm not sure mm -hmm. about this year, but yeah, you might, you guys might be the only other ones that I know of, but you guys also not only do Christmas, but you guys do other holidays too. So Friday the 13th haunts, is there anything like kind of uh, unique about that? Is it still all the, in the asylum or? Oh yeah. It's in the asylum. It's, it's, it's Super called superstitions. And so we have 13 superstitions. Some of them aren't are, so common. Yeah, that are up. So people have to go through and find them. Oh, and at the end, when they get when they get at the end, they have to say, "This is what I saw." So, like horseshoes, and I don't want to say everything, but yeah, you know, the some basic, of the typical, the then. basic yeah. superstitions. Okay, yeah. cool. that was fun. Um, our Easter, I think, I don't know, I like them all, but Valentine's is fun because Valentine's we do, you know, the 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 crew they're. They want a, they want to get a little frisky, you know. It's the frisky time of year. They want to get romantic, but uh, everybody's the doctors, their nurses are shutting them down, so they tamper with the lights and they keep turning the lights out so they can't find them, so they can run off and do their amorous stuff. So we do Valentine's in the dark. So you literally go through the entire haunt with nothing but a glow stick, and we've been doing that since. A small glow stick. It kind of happened out of necessity because we had this terrible electrical situation going on at the home haunt, and the lights actually went out because we had this horrible rain. So we were like, you know what? <laughs> Why don't we just do it with glow sticks? And it started way back when, and everybody loves it. It's so much fun. So that one's a lot of fun because it's completely dark. And I like it because I can run around and they can't, I can be standing right there and people are walking by me. But I think my favorite is Easter, even though it's the most trouble. It is so much work, but it is so much fun. We have a giant Easter bunny that runs around outside he's really scary and then we have an easter bunny inside who's like a crazy patient that thinks she's the easter bunny so we hide eggs throughout the haunt and you go th you when you start off you're you're going through the haunt but at the same time you're trying to find easter eggs yeah. and if you plastic just, easter eggs yeah plastic easter eggs yeah. and <laughs> if we you, call it our rotten yeah the rotten egg we hunt. call it our rotten egg hunt and people are like are they really rotten eggs no it's just plastic you're okay <laughs> check your prizes inside there. Yeah. No, we you so we did first, but we don't anymore. That was too much. That was yeah. so crazy. That but instead, crazy. you gather, and how many eggs you get at the end, you get a prize. So we'd have we make little Easter baskets with little toys and candies and stuff in them. And if you get the golden egg, which is hidden in there, sometimes in plain sight, sometimes it's hard to find. But if you find the golden egg, you get like a sweatshirt or something. And oh, uh, we had a group who came from San Diego who went to different haunts and they were just dedicated to finding that golden egg. And, and it was basically times. in front of them and they came through six times over and each over each time to try and find the goal. And then <laughs> the did. last time they came through, well, the last time for them, they probably would have kept coming. Finally, somebody just sort of turned his head and it was right there at eye level. Wow. Wow. But they had missed it. it all that time. It's so much fun, though. And that one's my favorite because the bunny runs around. And if you stop too long, then she'll come and take your eggs. So you're kind oh, of, wow. you know, you're not only under pressure to get away from the monsters, but you're also trying to keep your eggs from the Easter bunny. I just think it's so much fun. And like yeah. you said, it's kind of this weird mix of, because the decorating for Easter. So you're seeing the cute bunnies and, and then there's this, this other element. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, bunny. you got the scary element uh, on top of that. Yeah. And I think that's so neat that you guys really do something that's a little different like that. I, I, haunts are, they're fun no matter what, right? But oh, yeah. sometimes, you know, you go to them and, and they're all, some of them can be very much the same. So when you yeah. get that, you know, interesting sort of difference in there, like, like hey, like a spooky Easter egg hunt and, uh, and, uh, and <laughs> in the dark and, 
And um, I, I think that's really unique. And I think it adds a little bit of uh, excitement and it makes people co keep coming back, right? Uh, so they know that's nice. So do you guys generally have the same crew most years? Uh, do, you, do, you, do people keep coming back and stay with you and, and you know, or do you, yeah, do you usually do hold auditions or anything like that? We have held auditions in the past and, and we're a little bit particular you know, about, about how that all goes, because we like to keep it in, in a real family sort of a, a, an atmosphere, not saying all family, just saying, you know, the group is, is very close knit. And uh, we have people that have been with us for 17 years. Wow. Yeah, since, yeah. The beginning. since the beginning. Um, and, you know, people will come and go, of course, kids get married, you know, or have move. children or move, do that kind of stuff, go to college, which is always a good thing. So we've had people that we have a, a couple that moved to Vegas and they just drive down every weekend to work with us yeah. from Vegas. So yeah. some of them still come back and some of them will even come. We had one that was a cruise director and she would try to get a weekend off so she could come work with us. So it's kind of, yeah, you of, never know what you're going to see in there. One of our sons moved up to Salinas and he wound up coming back Kansas. for the, for the weekends. We had one that moved to Kansas, but he was kind of stuck. Oh yeah. And Richard did too. And, and Richard wound up coming back from Salinas. So he'd come down South um, to work, to do makeup. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when we do, it's, it's not a, it's a pretty good size crew, but we did have auditions last year when we opened up the second haunt over at the fairgrounds. We did, um, that, that one was huge. That's the biggest thing that we have ever taken on. That, that haunt was 22,000 square feet and we had to build it in one summer. We built an entire town. Oh, with a cemetery, with a cemetery. A laboratory and a funeral home. And I don't even remember everything that was in there. It was all kinds of stuff. We had um, a fog. Um, Fire. We had, yeah, we had explosions. Of course, the explosions and stuff going on. And then we had that swamp fog going across. Yeah, it um, was huge. Yeah, someone said it was the, it was the, they thought it was the biggest yet. So it was, it was fun. Area. It was fun because we've always, you know, our haunt is very gothic and beautiful. But it was fun to do something that was a little more gritty because we had these sort of like zombie-ish kind of characters. And we had the military and we had sirens and it was so much fun to do something so different and gritty yeah. and and she yeah. said zombies. prison they weren't they weren't zombies they, they said, were yeah they weren't zombies. they were infected yeah oh, okay you know we didn't know for, for yeah, me i know I, I don't dislike the the zombie theme for but for me it was kind of run dry in my head as far as what are we going to do that's a little more you know so what this was the backstory here is this is a, a town somewhere out in really nowheresville and uh, there's a government facility and they're doing tests, of course. And, and there's actually a, a bit of a historical background. I talk about the discovery of genetics with Gregor Mendel and then move forward from that point on to where DNA is, you know, the, the structure of DNA is, is discovered. And of course, the minute that happens, everybody wants to get into the picture because they can start slicing and dicing and cloning and doing all the wonderful stuff. So it's the 1970s around in there and something goes wrong. And so again, people are infected, but they're not what you would call zombies. They're just infected, they're getting sick and they're running around trying to get help and, and other stuff as people go through. So. A little bit like the uh, the crazies. Uh, you guys seen that movie? Yes, right. exactly. Right, kind of right. seems, it seems a little bit like, not exactly zombies, a little twist on it. A little more realistic. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. This, is, this yeah. is a little too realistic. Yeah. <laughs> this is the prequel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> so that sounds awesome. So obviously, uh, we, as we were talking a little earlier this year, that's that one's not going to happen. No. The no, the fairgrounds can't open. Okay. They're, the state. Uh, it's, uh, the state has locked it down, and yeah, uh, and but, you know, I mean, it's a huge place, uh, so uh, right. it's just it's not logistically feasible for them to open. But I'm assuming all goes well. Your plans is to try to bring it back next year. Oh yes, yes. we will be bring, we will be bringing it back with a few extra twists in there. Yeah, we got something really good next year. Yeah. We're so excited this year, but it's yeah, okay. Yeah. It'll happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more to look forward to. Yeah, looking forward <laughs> to it. Yeah. Well, we're trying. We are. We aren't. We aren't sure yet about All Saints either this season because, as you know, now California has got this color coding. And we're in San Bernardino County, which is still very purple. Well, not very purple. We're yeah, on the edge, yeah, we're on the but edge. we but we need to be according to the county. We need to be in the orange before we can open, because they're classifying us as family entertainment. Okay. So we've been appealing, and we've been working with the county. We got the fire. The fire department came in 
the fire marshal came in and he approved everything. He we showed him what we were doing, and he's right. We've been working very hard since this yeah. whole thing started. We've been working on getting the haunt very safe, and we put together a um, a plan, thirty plus page document. <clears throat> Um, that's our reopening plan, you know, which is um, something that, um, what was it, Scare? Uh, Fear Factory Fear did Fear Factory it. did in Utah. In May. And so in they, May. They, did a, they did their halfway to Halloween mm -hmm. haunt to see if it was feasible, and, and, and it turned out to be feasible. It turned out really well. Um, and they did it, you know, again, as, as they said, they did it because, you know, that's what we do. They weren't expecting to make money. They were hoping to break even, but right. it actually turned out, you know, as far as safety and everything else worked really well. It was a good experiment the, for all the of first us. Ones, yeah, they're probably the first ones to, to like try the reopening, but that's Utah. Sure. It's a little different in California. So <clears throat> I followed suit or we followed suit with a reopening plan. Like I said, 30 plus pages, you know, cause it's not just masks and not touching people. It's There's a hell so of a lot much more. more. Yeah. And we are compliant we actually exceed compliance according to the state and the county stuff. But again, like, like Christy said, you know, we're in the purple. So um, right. until we get into a better, a better color. Yeah. We know we can safely do it, but we don't want to do it illegally. We would only do it if the county and we approves don't, it. Yeah. And we don't want to so, get anybody sick. We don't want our actors yeah. sick. Correct. We don't want our patrons. Correct. So yeah. there's so, so many unknown variables. Yeah. So the, so final word, is that given by the health department kind of a thing? Like, so say you were, were, yeah. were cold when you want to open and it may, say maybe where we've downgraded into purple or I mean, excuse me, into red or orange and, um, or maybe, Hey, maybe we're still in purple. Do you, are you able to mm -hmm. appeal and have somebody come out and check it? Or is it, if it's still purple, it's a no go. Uh, well, that's what we're working on. That's right what now. we're working on. I'm not sure, you know, how it's all going to work out. I mean, I got this ready, got the plan ready. Um, we we showed it to the ready. fire marshal, you know, he's, he had no problem with it. Um, I contacted the agencies involved. I got a, basically I got a, well, uh, your family entertainment, so no. And I said, well, can we appeal that? Well, yeah, here's some a place you can go to. I sent that off. I sent off a nice long so that's explanation. Where we're at right now is yeah. we're and, in that process yeah. of the appeal. Okay. So yeah, we'll see what happens. It's yeah. it's interesting because getting it up to compliance was really a challenge because the first thought we had was how are we gonna make this, you know, curtains. We have curtains as you walk from one space to the other. So and some of our They're gone. They're gone. The curtains are gone. I mean, everything to get a coat. At first we were like, this is not gonna be scary. But then when we started thinking how can we make it we had to cut down our actors we were down to 10 actors for the whole thing which is phenomenal for that's we never really had a crew that small so it's we've cut everybody down but it doesn't feel like it there's a whole different vibe in there we've yeah. you know we've compensated with different kind of props and we've tried some really creative stuff and i actually think it's i think it's really cool it's very different than anything we've done but i actually think it's very cool and i'm excited for the the public to see it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that's one thing that I've been sort of seeing, I think throughout this season. And when we started hearing things about knots not going to open and, and universal was going to close and all that. Huh. Um, and that, that to me, I mean, that makes sense. It, I just don't see how it could feasibly reopen when the parks aren't even open it's right so now. Big. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but it's, it's been interesting to see the haunt community really come up with really interesting workarounds like i know a lot of places yeah. drive-in haunts and some places are doing outdoor like uh i think, think the flesh yard has plans to do a corn maze and lots mm -hmm. of different um you know kind of really unique and innovative ideas and that's really cool and i think that's i, I kind of think this year i mean saying that everybody is able to open i think this year will be really unique and kind of innovative and I think it could drive forward things and people might take some ideas from this year and, and move yeah. them on forward into the next years. Absolutely. So, I love yeah. what you're saying too. I do love that the haunt community has really come together in all of this. It really shows what a great group of people haunters really are because everybody's working together and sharing ideas and, <clears throat> and you know, you don't see that a lot in a lot of communities. It's right. Very creative. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of support. Yes, yes. Well, I mean, it's it's one of those things that everybody has a passion for that's involved in it, right? Yeah. It, it takes a passion to yeah. be able to do something like this. 
It really does. Yeah, you have to. So all yeah. goes well, let's say. Um, I noticed on your website, and tell me if this is still your plan, it looks like you were planning to be open Fridays and Saturdays in October. Is yeah. that, that That's still the plan as long as everything goes okay? That's yeah. still the plan. The difference is we'll have timed, we'll have time ticketing. So you won't be able to walk up at all. There won't be any cash involved. We're closing the gift store. That'll all be online and it'll all be timed. So there'll be increments of time that everybody can come through and they have to wait in the car until their time comes up. And so no groups will ever be interacting with other groups, which wasn't a huge stretch for us right. because that's the way we do our haunt. We don't do a conga line. We do individual groups that go through. So you have that kind of immersive experience, like you're in there by yourself. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't that hard for us, but the lobby, you know, that presents a whole, the lobby. Yeah. The queue crowded. line gets really bad. So that's right. the time ticketing was a good alternative for that. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Yeah. And I noticed again on your website as well, uh, and I'm sure you guys posted this earlier this year, but you it looked like you were going to do another um, Friday the 13th haunt in November and another Christmas haunt. So again, I'm sure still plan to go on with those as long as everything is permitted. Yep. So long as everything, yeah. yeah. So long as everything stay, can stay safe, we're gonna, you know, that's our regular routine now throughout the year, with with maybe an added one or two as we're working on as well. Um, we were just going to leave everything, you know, we've got it up to COVID compliance. It's very safe. We're just probably going to leave it like that for a while until we feel comfortable and everybody feels safe because yeah. we have some high risk people that work in the haunt with us as well. And we're, you know, we're very concerned about everybody. We're concerned about the community. We're concerned about our actors. So we're just going to keep it like this probably for a little while, Good. but it's cool. Yeah, that, yeah, and like I said, I, mean, I think that there's a lot of things that we learned this year we'll probably keep carrying over, which I think is, which is really going to be. Yeah. Good. So, yeah. so where do you see yourselves going? So 2021 and beyond, let's say, and things are back to normal. Um, any, so we have the new infected over in the fairgrounds. Any other plans for any expansions or do you kind of, are, are you going to build on your story? How, how, what, what are your future plans? Yeah, we'll probably build on on um, All Saints again. Uh, uh, there can be a lot more added to the story that's not there. There's kind of a sequence of events that goes along with it that we've been sort of slowly trickling out over the years. We don't want to just dump it out um, right off the bat. Uh, and um, we're hoping to, again, like I said, we're looking, so we're hoping to be to a point where we can expand back up again, have a little more room. You need a bigger place. Uh, yeah. I need for, a bigger boat. Yeah. Yes. And for infected, <laughs> um, uh, our plans again are to, to be in and get that thing going with a few new twists. Yeah. I think that are going to be pretty exciting for people. Um, yeah. If they, if they enjoyed the, the show we put on, which they did, they enjoyed the show we put on for that one with this new stuff in there, it's going to be a, a little more face fit, fast paced and, and uh, um, heart pounding, I think. And then uh, uh, we do have uh, and we have had, now we closed it down, but we have had uh, several escape rooms in the past. Those are built right into the asylum. So, and of course they have their storylines in there. Um, one of our first ones eh, dealt with the doctors, with one of the doctor's offices. You had to get into one of the doctor's offices in order to figure out how to get, how to get out once you're locked in. Because the entities the, that are in the haunt don't really want you to leave. And we did have live actors. They were hidden. So they were basically voices. And uh, it was very, very scary. It was always dark. There was that original one had one, two, three, four. Oh, there was four, like four, five, six rooms there was six that rooms. you had to get through. So it wasn't like one room, two room. And here's a little interesting story about that, too. We started having way back when we were home haunt, we would start hearing from our actors about all these crazy things that would happen. And they were just convinced, like we have the, the, the doll room and a lot of those dolls are very old. Some of them are a hundred years old or more. And we'd start hearing stories about the dolls moving around and, you know, and they'd see the dolls peeking around the corners and, and we'd hear, there was a, somebody who heard giggling, we heard giggling, but there was like little stories, you know, but we think, oh, it's just because you're in a haunted house. And then we moved over there and we even had, again, it started up and it got more and more active. And then we had an escape room group 
and there's a, there was a chain link area where you're looking through a chain link and then there was another door past that. So you're looking into this area and they kept freaking out because they saw someone moving around in there, like a person. But there's, there, wasn't there was nobody there. that could get in there because it was locked up on both sides. So we were just as confused. And we have cameras everywhere and we couldn't see anything. So we ended up actually bringing in um, paranormal. paranormal groups. And that's been a whole nother. That's been so because much fun. Because of the fun. antiques. They're finding, They're finding so all kinds much of interesting, crazy yeah, stuff. Interesting stuff so. Yeah, so that's a fun. So while the place may not be haunted, the antiques are apparently are haunted. So Yeah, we just had a group in there last month that came in socially distanced mm -hmm. and um and they came in and went through and they had some really we're waiting for the video footage of that because they had stuff yeah, they thrown had at them activity, and yeah which was interesting and voices and yeah a lot of stuff so that's kind of a fun little side thing is that it's really actually haunted yeah are you gonna act, put put any of that um that footage up or anything create anything with that yeah. You know, maybe so we long should. As, so long yeah. as that's okay with the, with that group, yeah, we'll yeah. put it up so that people can see it. That would yeah. be fun. Maybe uh, yeah, something I guess so. that people can can you know either watch online and or purchase online or something. Kind of a little behind the scenes of you know is is it really haunted or not? Yeah, kind of a thing. That's, yeah. that's, a, good that's a good idea. Yeah, thanks. I, I won't charge you for yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's a good idea. A little royalty no, you there. <laughs> you I think that would actually be. Um, I think that would be really, really, really fun and really unique. And I think, especially for you, I think you people that have been coming to you guys for a really long time. So I've never personally yeah. been, but I definitely plan. At, you know, hey, oh, yeah. crossed, my plan is to be there this year if possible. Oh, good. So, if possible. Um, yeah, I definitely like to experience. Like I said, I had definitely planned on coming on uh, earlier this year but um yeah hopefully hopefully fingers crossed everything works out <gasps> um now your escape rooms i know you mentioned that is that something that you guys in different times do you do that during the year like a regular escape rooms or is it only during oh yeah no we yeah we do it um we change it every couple of years well so. not even that every couple of months sometimes um We've had probably about four iterations, I think. We've had four separate ones. And, you know, we have the, the whole maze. So we can, we can pick different locales or we can change wall, wall here or there and create a whole new scenario for, you know, for anybody. And generally, it's on the off-season time. So, yeah. um, right. you know, all during, yeah, once we're done with, with Easter, then we convert everything over to the, the escape room and go from there. Um, we did an homage once right in the middle of the season. We found out that they were doing a remake of it. So we were like, well, we have to do something with that. So we incorporated this clown element and we didn't, you know, of course we didn't steal the character Pennywise, but we had these evil clowns and that was so much fun. We ended up, we had a, one of the things that we did, I guess I can say it now because we're not doing it, but we had balloons that were, you know, helium we, that, balloons and that, you had to pop them to get the yeah. stuff out in from inside of that's it. That's the one thing we stole from the movie. Was yeah, the we did. We did. It was a red balloon. We made sure not to take anything. Uh, yeah. The one that had something in it was a red balloon, but yeah, but yeah, it was, um, there were the clue or clues actually were in different places, including uh, one or two in a balloon, as well as other objects they had to get to, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We had clowns but, that actually came in and interacted. Yeah, that with was the, live action there. There yeah. were clowns that Scar actually scary came clowns. in. And tried to help people or not, actually. Um, they tried to help, but people wouldn't believe them. And yeah, so they would do the opposite of what they were being told. And then they'd be in there forever. <laughs> yeah. Or if they were on the right track. And, and the sometimes they wouldn't tell them the enough, truth. Yeah. They'd, uh, I think there's one point, one of the clowns just decided that they were, they were just doing too well or weren't paying enough <laughs> attention and took all the paperwork they had laid out and just threw it up. Threw it up air. in the air. And uh, one time and she came in out. and took, she literally, cause they put some of their stuff down on the desk. So she just ran in there and picked it up and ran out. Oh, wow. And then we had secret doors. So she disappeared and they were like, well, where's our clues? So <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it was very entertaining for us on the cameras. That's <laughs> yeah. And we did a, we did a Santa one. We did one for yeah. Christmas. We did uh, an escape room that was, uh, that was Santa. Um, our backstory for our Santa Claus by the way, is, is uh, uh, his wife uh, put him on a diet back in the 1800s, put him on a diet. And he got, he got thin, but he got very, very hungry and he kind of went off. And so when he was done with reindeer, he started turning to elves. And so um, they, the elves wind up, wind up kidnapping him and bringing him to the asylum At the time to get that, better. 
you know, the best asylum in the and, country. And of course, the, the ghosts of the elves were in there trying to get him. So, so they're trying to get revenge on Santa, the ghosts of the elves, because, and they're but like kind of partially eaten elves. Oh, wow. This one was just Christmas themed. He's kind of bitter because he's been on a diet. So he's in a bad mood. He's angry. <laughs> he's angry. <laughs> and then we have this really sassy Mrs. Claus. I think I think the Q line act is probably the best part of, of Christmas to me. Because we have this really sassy Mrs. Claus with this giant set of boobs and a and a butt. Okay, really. Yeah. She's very she's, she's just very voluptuous. Very voluptuous and she's nice. very salty. So she's a lot of fun. A lot of interaction. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. That, so, that, that's in the queue line, huh? So it's kind of neat to have that interaction before you even get in. Oh yeah. Yeah, our queue line actors have been amazing. Oh man, yeah, everybody is. It's just yeah, yeah, an amazing group, good people. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get to do instead of just one at a time for the escape rooms, uh, the plan is kind of to expand into into multiples from there. Yeah. Uh, maybe even maybe even at the uh, fairgrounds because they have you know open areas that that can go on. Yeah, you guys yeah. already have all the other stuff going with the hunt, so it's it's it takes a lot of work. Yeah. When you talk to the escape room artists, they yeah it they, does. I mean, if that's exclusive oh, yeah, no, it, what they do, then hey, but yeah, when you're doing other stuff, that's that's a lot. So any plans for any kind They're of always over there. Of July or Thanksgiving hunt? That's one. Those are two things I didn't see on there. Any any plans or New Year's hunt? So that might be kind of cool. <laughs> so there was a talk of an evil turkey <laughs> where the turkey's taking revenge and i just i can't wrap my she she won't go for it i've been waiting to try to do it something, I just something tur something turkey but so maybe in the future know. something nice and cheesy yeah <laughs> attack of the millet, millet tomatoes or yeah maybe yeah. in the future fourth of july we talked about it gets well, tricky because because while it while it's summer is tough because that's our major we change a lot of the haunt it's not the same haunt every season you come back we will well we have during the summer we just gut and we change rooms around and we yeah we, we like out. to keep people confused so when you go through you, you're like oh i know this room i know this room and all of a sudden you're like whoa where am i because we'll change things in there all the time so sometimes we need a longer break because you know it's a lot of work so sometimes like fourth of july lands right in the middle of summer and that's that's a big construction time for us. Very psychologically based. We're both anthropologists, study humans. Mm -hmm. So we know, you know, all know how to say stuff. Yeah, yeah, we know what people That's are scared of. You're so good at it because you have a background in it. And we like it. That's why we like and it. And we like it too. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. Definitely looking forward to hopefully seeing a couple of new concepts in the, in the coming days and, and, and coming years too, so. Hopefully, hopefully. Let's hope, hope this passes hope, yeah. quickly. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, at least, at least, hopefully, it becomes more manageable to where at least over the next few months that you know some of the restrictions can be eased and yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, as long as there, you guys are on, I'll definitely be there during this year. And I wanted to definitely thank you guys for you know spending some time with me today and talking about your haunt. Um, I'm I'm personally really really excited for it. And um, I'll definitely be putting your information down in the descriptions and everything to, so that people can, can find oh, you. But you. Why don't you um, shout out a little bit, where can, where's the best way people can reach you and, and, and uh, take a look at everything you guys have to offer? Your Instagram, your webpage, all that stuff. Yeah, Instagram, um, on All Saints Asylum, hashtag, is that it? I don't mm -hmm. know, my son does that usually. But um, Facebook, we have a lot of information on Facebook. You can contact us there. You can contact us on our website. Um, Twitter. We have a Twitter account. We even have a YouTube account if you want to go that way. Oh, very so cool. So we have lots of ways to reach us. Yeah. Very There's cool. a lot of ways to get a hold of us. And if you just send a message from our website, I'll get it right away. It's pretty easy to get to us. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, the phone. Yeah, uh, and you can always call. Well. You can always call okay. and leave a message. Usually, Excellent. if I don't, uh, 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 usually I'll pick up the phone, but if I don't <laughs> recognize a number, um, I won't pick up right away. So if you leave a message and I know it's haunt related, I'll answer back. Usually in October, we just answer all the time. Because yeah. every call oh, we yeah. get is haunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Very cool. Well, thank you. And again, I'll put every all the relevant information in for you guys. And uh, thank you so much for, for spending some time with me and uh, talking well, about- Well, thank you. It was, funny. it was nice to finally see you face to face. Uh, We've been talking for so long. Yeah, we've been talking for literally six months, really. Um, yeah. <laughs> ever since, I've, it really started all at Haunt X, where I was, that was actually one of the first, that actually was the first video we put up on our channel. 
And then um, we talked to, I think a lot of your, your, your actors, your scare actors at the time who were there and they, you yeah. know, they gave us your information and said, Hey, you know, give them a call. Would they'd love to do an interview. So again, thank you for taking the time to do that. It's great to meet you guys. Thanks for having us. I will definitely be seeing you guys uh, later this year. And, um, and then of course too, I'd love to keep coming back to your other, your other events as well. And uh, we we'll, we'll like to cover those too. So yeah, we love that. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you well, guys thank so you. very much. Um, thank you everybody for watching and um, we will see you next time. Bye.